ओम सां सरस्वती नमः नमस्ते नमस्ते we left off the last session in adoha number 42 and bibishan discrimination was leading the kingdom of the ego remember the great ego robin the the king of the kingdom of the ego kicked discrimination out of the kingdom he said i don't want anyone in this kingdom who doesn't agree with me so out and discrimination said do you know i'm going to go visit the one who shiva always meditates upon ram i'm going to visit the one who sita holds dear in her heart ram i'm going to visit the the one that bharat always keeps in his mind ram and i'm going to have the darshan of of the one whose sandals are kept on the head of bharat ram and today i get darshan so we're going to begin at the end of uh, doha number 42 please recite along with us ehi bidikoro ta suprema bichara ayu sapadi sindu ehi para kapina bibishandu abata deka jana koi ripudu ta bisesha taki raki kapisa parking ahe samachar sabataki sunahe kasugri basunda kura kurai aba milana da sanana pahe kaha prabhu saka bujie kaha kahi kapisa sunu kuna raha jani na jagi nisachara maya kama rup teki karan aya bed hamara lena shatta aba rakia bandi moi asbaba sakani ti sumani ki bichari mama pana sarana gata boya hari suni prabhu pachna karach kanumana sarana gata bachala bhagwana sarana gata kakuje tajakin nij anahit anumani ke para pavara papa moya tinaki bilokatahani siyabora ramachandra ki jai bhavan sutta kanu man ki jai uma pati mahadeva ki jai koti bi prabad lage ki jahu aaye saran tha jaguna ki dhagu san mukha hoy jeeva mo ki jab ki janm koti agna saki tab ki phap bant kar saka subahu bajn morat ki bab na kaadu jom bhi dushtri da kyan soi hoy more san mukha ab ki soi nimal man janm so moki baba moi ka pat chal chidran baba bhed lein pat ba das sita jab hum na kach boya hani ka pesa jag ma kutsa ka nisa chal jeti lakshman nan ki nis mi sab hi the the jom sabit aba saranai rakhi utha ki pran ki nai uboy bamti the ji aal ko hasi ka जय कृपाल मिछले अंग दहनु समेत सिया बोल राम चंद्र की जय भवन सुत हनुमान की जय उमापति महादेव की जय सादर तेरी आगे करी पाना चले जहान रघुपति करुणा कर दूतरी की दे दे के दो व्रत नायल नाम द दान के दाता बहुरी ब्राह्म जबी दाम पीलो की रखे युकुटु की एकत कत पाल रोके बुज पल्लम कर जारु नलचन श्यामल कात भनत बोय मोचन शिंग कंज आय 
Kalamandali <laughs> Rati Sakadar Mabirai Kiki Bati Mejanu Tumari Sabriti Atina Yanipuna Baba Niti Buru Bala Basatara Karakata Dishta Sangata Dia Devi Vitata Abba Paga Deki Kusadara Viraya Jon to Mikini Jani Janadaya Tabalaki Kusalana Jiba Kahun Sapane Humana Bisho Ram, jab lagi budget na Ram kahun, sok dam ta jikan, siya bor Ram chandra ki jai, pavan sut karuman ki jai, uma pati mahadev ki jai. Tabalaki Rida Yambasata Kalanana Lopa Mo Machada Madamana Jabalaki Yuna Nabasata Raghunata Dara Chapa Sayaka Kati Pata Mama Tatarun Tami Adi Ari Raka Dwesha Huluka Sukakari Tabalaki Basati Jiva Manamaki Jabalaki Prabhupada Rabi Nati Ava Meku Saladi Teya Boy Hapare Deki Ram Pada Kamala Tumhare Tumba Tripala Japada Anyakula Taki Napyapa Tribita Baba Sula Mengi Sitara Tiyadam Subahu Shuba Achara Nitin Ibna Kinkahu Jasuru Muni Dan Ava Tain Prabhu Hara Sibri Daya Moke Lava Aho Bhagya Mama Amita Ati Ram Kripa Sukha Punj De Unayana Biran Chiziban, Sivya to Jagapala Kanja Siyabora, Ram Chandra Ki Jai, Havana Sutta Hanu Bana Ki Jai, Uma Pati Ma Deva Ki Jai. Sunu Husakani Jakaku Subahu Jana Busundi Sambu Kiri Jabu Jong Nara Koi Charachara Drogi Avay Sabaya Saranda Taki Boy Taji Madambu Kapata Chaladana Karakun Sadia Teki Sadu Samana Janani Janaka Bandu Sutadara Tanu Ganu Baba Nari Rida Rori Bara Sabati Mamta Bhattori, Mama Padamana ki banda pori dore, Samadara si i chaka chunakin, Harasa soka boya naki mana magin, Asa jana mama ura basa kai se, Lobi pridayam basa i dalya jai se, Tuma sari ke tanta priya more, Dara kudeka naki nana di hore, Saguna upasa ka para kita, Nirata niti dira neem Te nara prana samana mama Jin ke dvija pada prem Siyamara Ramachandra ki jay Pavala sutta hanuman ki jay Umapati mahadeva ki jay Sunulam ke sakalagunga tore 
Tating Tuma Atisaya Priya More Rama Pachana Suni Pana Juta Sakala Sahin Jaya Kripa Peruta Sunata Bhivisha Nu Prabhupada Pani Nakinyatata Sravanamrita Jani Pada Ambujata Kibara Kimbara Ridian Samatana Prima Upara Sunakudeva Sacharachara Swami Pranata Pahura Ampara Jami Ura Kachu Pratama Basanara He Raki Prabhupada Preeti Nasarita Saudahi Abha Kripala Nija Bhagati Pavani Teku Sadasi Bhavana Pavani Eva Mastuka Ki Prabhu Yanadira Madhaturata Sindhu Koranira Jata Pisakata Bhikki Chanakin Mora Darasu Amoga Jagamakin Aska Ki Ramatila Kateki Sara Sumana Pristina Vaboya Yapara Ravana Kroda Anala Nija Shwasha Mira Prachand Jarata Bibishana Raki Yoku Dine Raju Akand Joe Sampati Siva Ravana King Dien Idiye Dasamad Soi Sampata Bibishana King Sakuti Dien Iraku Nath Siyamora Ramachandra Ki Jai Pavad Sutta Karumana Ki Jai Umakati Mahadeva Ki Jai Asprabhuchari Bajaki Joana Tinara Pasu Binu Buch Pishana Nija Jana Jani Taki Apanava Prabhu Sabhava Kapikula Banapava Huni Sadhyas Arbyagur Basi Sadarupa Sabarapita Kudasi Bola Pachana Niti Prati Palaka Karana Manu Jadanu Jakaula Kala Sunu Kapisa Lanka Pati Vira Tehi Vidhi Thari Hachadi Gambira Sun Kula Makara Uraka Jasha Jati Ati Hagada Dustara Sababati Kahala Kesuna Kuradu Nayak Koti Sindhu Shoshaka Tavasaya Jagapita Dabi Niti Asti Gai Pinar Koryam Sagar Sanajai Prabhu Tumara Kula Gura Jali Kegi Upai Vichari Dinu Prayasa Saga Tarihi Sakala Balu Kapitari Siyamura Ramachandra Ki Jai Pavana Sutta Karumbana Ki Jai Umapati Mahadeva Ki Jai Let's go back and translate a little bit and remember what the story is all about. Uh, so Bibishan was kicked out of the kingdom of the ego. We were at, at uh, Doha number 42, and he was so excited because, you know, you know Robin and Kumbhakarn and Bibishan, the three, when they were young men, they went off to do Tapashi. And Brahma came and said, I'm satisfied with your tapasya, what do you want? And Brahma, uh, Ravana said, I want power. I want to be the king of the earth. And Brahma said, Tatastu, I give you the boon. And Kumbhakarn had planned that he would want to have king, dominion over heaven. And he wanted Indra's asam. Indra knew Kumbhakarna's intention, and he said to Saraswati, Saraswati, you have to help us. Please make him make a mistake. And Brahma said, Kumbhakarna, what do you want? And instead of saying, I want Indra's asam, he said, I want Nidra's asam. And Brahma said, Eva must do. <laughs> you go to sleep. <laughs> I give you the asana, you get the posture of sleep. And Bibishan uh, uh, said, Brahma, I want devotion, pure devotion to God's feet. And Brahma said, Tatastu, one day Ram will come and he will give you the blessing of him. His perception. He will give you darshan. 
And now discrimination, Bibishan is on his way to get the darshan that he was promised by Brahma. It was the fruit of his tapasya. All his life he was living in the kingdom of the ego like a tongue between the teeth. And now he's been kicked out of the kingdom of the ego and he's going to see Ram. In this way, lost in thoughts of love, he quickly crossed the ocean to the other shore. When the monkeys saw him approaching, they thought that he was an ambassador from the enemy. They ordered him to await orders and went to inform excellent friend and told him this news. So they went to the king of the monkeys, Kabish, uh, uh, Sugrib, the excellent friend, and they said to him uh, that, uh, the, the, that an ambassador has come from the enemy's side. Someone has come from Lanka. An excellent friend went to tell consciousness, and he said to Ram, O oh, king of light, please listen. The brother of the ego has come to meet you. And the Lord asked, My friend, what do you understand? And the king of the monkeys replied, O oh, great king, please listen. We don't know why he has come. But we know that the demons by their magic can change their form at their own wish. This fool has come here to learn our secrets. That is why I think it is best that we do not allow him. Uh, he may be a spy. He may be a terrorist. He may be some kind of... Uh, he's come from the enemy. He's the brother of the enemy. And consciousness my, said, My friend, you are expert at the rules of ethics. But I have a vow to take away the fear of anyone who takes refuge in me. Pure devotion was delighted to hear the Lord's words. Though consciousness again said, those human beings who for fear of their own loss refuse shelter to a being in distress, they are small, filled with sin and selfishness, and there is loss in even seeing them. So here Ram is saying, look, you may, he may be a spy, he may be a terrorist, he may be a, a, an ambassador from the enemy, but look, anybody who comes to me to take refuge, I'm going to grant refuge. And anybody who doesn't give refuge when people plead for refuge, they are really small. There's a sin, there's a loss even in looking at them. Even he who has slain millions of learned peoples, Brahmahatya is one of the great sins because the Brahmins are the protectors and the, the repositories of the Dharma. Before it was all written down, the Brahmins had it memorized. So that's why Brahmahatya was the greatest sin because by killing the Brahman, you're, just, you're burning the library. You're destroying the repository of knowledge. You're destroying the inspiration which keeps society focused in the path of Dharma, in the ideals of perfection. Otherwise you have people pleading for, for refuge and others holding a sword over their head, taking a video of them crying out and saying, please don't kill me, and thinking that they're great, and that's their dharma. So now, he, he, even if he was uh, a, a, a guilty of killing mil millions of people, even if he slayed a Brahmin, if he takes refuge in me, I will not forsake him. Anyone who comes to God with a sincerity and purity and clarity, I forgive all their sins. Whatever life can come to face me, his sins of millions of births are destroyed. Any life form, even if we come as, as human beings, even if we come as rishis and munis, even in any way we come to God, he's going to take away the sins of millions of births. Sinners have an intrinsic nature that they never find inclination to celebrate divinity. That's their inclination. They would much rather enjoy themselves rather than celebrate divinity. 
If he actually had evil in his heart, would it be possible for him to come before me? Only those human beings who have a pure mind can find me. I do not accept deceitful cheaters. Even if the one with ten heads sent him to learn our secrets, we still have no cause for fear of loss, Lord of Monkeys. What secret can he, not, can he learn? The secret is love God. That's the only secret we've got, is God is in our heart and we love God. If he wants to learn the secret, let him in. What do we have to lose? My friend, determination alone can slay all of the demons in but a moment. And if he has come to seek refuge in me because of fear, then I shall grant him. The repository of grace said with a laugh, In either case, bring him in. And the monkeys cried, Victory to the giver of grace. J J Kripala Keki Kapi Chale Anga the Handu Subhead. While he who subordinates himself and pure devotion went to bring him in. So he who subordinates himself and pure devotion go. Escort discrimination into the presence of the Lord of Light. He was escorted with respect to where the repository of grace, the Lord of Light, was situated. From afar, he saw the two brothers who give bliss to all eyes. Just seeing them fills us all with bliss. Seeing that picture of consciousness, the residence of beauty, the visitor stood completely still and transfixed, unable to utter a word or blink his eyes. The Lord had long arms, eyes like red lotuses, and a dark body which takes away the fear of those who take refuge in him. He had the shoulders of a lion, a broad chest, and was very charming. His face was more mesmerizing than uncountable gods of love. If you saw uncountable co comedy, or if you saw Cupid, it's so a convention of Cupids. His countenance was even more pleasing. Seeing the Lord, discrimination could not hold back his tears of love, and his body began to tremble. Then he composed himself and spoke in soft and sweet words, O oh Lord, the one with ten heads is my brother. Remember, Robin had ten heads. He had offered his head to Brahma, and Brahma, and Brahma said, I'll give you ten heads. And so he became Dashanana, and he saw through the ten senses, uh, the five organs of action, the five organs of knowledge. And discrimination was the brother of the ego who saw through the ten senses. O oh, protector of the gods, I was born of the family of demons. My body was born of darkness, and by nature I am prone to sin, just like the owl enjoys the darkness of light, uh, of night. <laughs> so just as the owl sees best in the night, the demons are prone to sin. They're prone to selfish behavior, and egotism and attachment are ingrained within them from their childhood. They're taught to be a somebody. And be a something in this world. Make your mark and achieve greatness and fame and, and wealth and splendor and be the envy of all others. That's the Ashura philosophy. O oh Lord, I have come to you having heard that you destroy the fear of existence. All fear and existence you take away. You destroy the pain of all who are distressed and give comfort to those who take refuge in you. Protect me, protect me, hero of light. 
I'm taking refuge in you. You protect me. You take away my pain and destroy all my fear. Please. That's my prayer. And you have a vow to protect and fulfill the prayers of anyone who has the purity and the, the uh, intention to come into your presence. Seeing him bowing completely at his feet, immediately the Lord rose with great delight. Hearing those humble words, the Lord's mind rejoiced, and with his long arms he raised him and embraced him to his heart. Allowing his younger brother determination to embrace him, discrimination was given a seat at the Lord's side. The Lord who removes all fear from devotees spoke these words. Hey, Lord of the kingdom of the ego, are you and your family well? What? This is amazing. Discrimination was just kicked out of the kingdom of the ego. Ram is calling him the Lord of the kingdom of the ego. We'll follow this, uh, it, 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 this event in a little bit. So the Lord, he says, are you and your family well? You live in a very difficult place. Day and night you have the society of evil. In such a circumstance, how do you practice your ideals of perfection? How do you maintain your dharma when you live with evil? You must be very strong and very centered and very focused on the goal of maintaining the ideal of perfection. I know all about your lifestyle. You are an expert in ethical behavior and have nothing to do with unethical behavior. Oh, dear one, it is much better to live in hell than to have God place us in evil association. I mean, it's really tough to live in a hard place where other people are not supporting your satsang and you have all sorts of them all the time. There's so many bad influences coming at you all the time. It's like living in a mall. <laughs> all the bad influences will be constantly calling you. And all the good in influences, the dharmic influences that say, maintain your ideals of perfection. They're very, very difficult to maintain. Discrimination replied, O oh Lord of light, now that I have seen your feet, I am well. And you have given me the greatest compassion to have known me as your servant. Isn't that amazing? It was all worthwhile. All that time in purgatory, in the evil influence, trying to maintain my center and trying to maintain the ideals of perfection. Now I get to see your feet. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm more than well. <laughs> I'm in a state of bliss. I'm in a state where I want to be. The state of satsang. The United States of Satsang. A new nation is born. And if you allow me to become your servant, you know me as a servant, that is your compassion. No life can be well, neither can there be rest in dreams or in thoughts until one renounces desires and takes refuge in singing of divine consciousness. Hear, hear. <laughs> I, and I think the eyes vote for it. Every, all, all the divine eyes vote for that statement of discrimination that there can never be rest in dreams or in thoughts until one renounces desires and takes refuge in singing of divine consciousness. The evil ones, greed, delusion, jealousy, arrogance, pride, and others come that only can only stay in our minds until the Lord of Light, arms with bow and arrows, does not take up residence in our hearts. 
So when Ram comes with his bows and arrows, consciousness stands up in our hearts, then all those evil demons, uh, greed and delusion and jealousy, arrogance, pride, etc., they, they all flee when Ram takes residence in our heart. Attachment is like a completely dark night. Passion and enmity give pleasure to the owl who remains awake. Uh, so just like the owl sees in the night, uh, the, the attachment is like the night, and only the owl can stay awake. That night of attachment can only occupy the mind of life until the radiance of the Lord rises like the rising sun. So the radiance of the Lord dispels the night and disperses the darkness. And then uh, the, the, there is no more attachment. All the attachment has fled. Oh consciousness, seeing your lotus feet has made me well and my greatest fears have been dispelled. Oh merciful one, the ones who enjoy your favor are free from the threefold torments of existence. Body, mind, and soul, bur, buaswa, and gross body that is perceivable through the senses, subtle body conceivable in the mind, causal body known through intuition, where the threefold torments of existence. I am an extremely lowly being born of demons. I never perform your pure behavior. Yet the form that men of wisdom strive to see in meditation has been so gracious as to embrace me to his heart. I'm just as a small fry. I have no purity, I have no clarity, I have no greatness. And these moonies and rishis are meditating for yugas together, lifetime after lifetime, and they long to see you and hear I get to be in your presence and you are embracing me? Can you imagine? Oh, consciousness, rays of happiness and grace. With what good fortune am I blessed with today? I have seen with my own eyes the lotus feet of he who is served by creative consciousness, Brahma, and the consciousness of infinite goodness, Shiva. With my own eyes I get to see. It's not a theory in a book. It's not just a statue. It's actually the living God. And consciousness said, listen, my friend, I will tell you of my intrinsic nature, which is known by the wise crow Bushundi, who radiates peace, Shankar, and the daughter of the mountains. Uh, see, I remember Kak Bushundi, the crow, was telling the story to Garuda, and Shiva is telling the story to Parvati. Uh, so this is the secret of my intrinsic nature, which they know. And now I'm going to tell you discrimination, so you will know, and all the devotees will know too. If any man, even a traitor to the world, which moves and does not move, comes to me to take refuge from fear with full consciousness, and renounces arrogance, delusion, and various forms of deceitful behavior, I make him a sadhu very quickly. That's my intrinsic nature. Mother, father, brother, children, wife, body, wealth, home, friends, and family, if one renounces all attachments and binds himself to my feet with no other desire than me, he sees all with equilibrium. His mind is always happy and he knows neither grief nor fear. Such true beings reside in my heart just like the thought of wealth resides in the heart of a greedy man. Saints like you are beloved by me, and for no other reason do I wear a body.
I become embodied, manifest in a form because I love saints like you who renounce all of your egotism and your arrogance and your attachments and just look for me with equilibrium and love. Those who worship the Lord with form who always think of the welfare of others, who are constant in the performance of ethical procedures, who offer love to the feet of the learned, they are like my very breath. Listen, Lord of the kingdom of the ego, within you are all appropriate qualities, in addition to which you are very much beloved by me. Again, he's addressing him. Ram is calling Bibishan the Lord of the kingdom of the ego. Hearing the words of consciousness, all the monkeys began to shout, Victory to consciousness, the repository of grace. Discrimination could not hear enough of the nectar of the Lord's words. Who could? If God said that he would accept me, I, I would be waiting very patiently for the next thing he was going to say. He grasped those lotus feet again and again and his heart was bursting with the fullness of love. He said, O oh Lord, O oh Master of the world which moves and does not move, O oh Protector of all life, O oh you who know the innermost secrets of all, I had one desire which has been washed away in the river of divine love to your feet. O oh God, O oh giver of grace, grant me pure devotion like Shiva always keeps in his mind. So Shiva always meditates on Vishnu. And it was very interesting, one day in Kailash Parvati was looking a little bit bored because Shiva was just sitting there in deep, deep meditation. And she called, Oh Lord! And Shiva didn't respond. And she said, Shiva! And Shiva didn't move. And Parvati just stood there watching him for a long, long time. And ultimately, when Shiva opened his eyes, Parvati bowed down with devotion to Shiva, and she said, Shiva, I have to ask you a question. The whole world meditates upon you. Everyone is praying to you, meditating upon you, contemplating you. Upon whom are you meant? And Shiva replied, I always meditate on Vishnu. Ram is always in my heart. So now, give me pure devotion just like Shiva. That's discrimination's plea. Eva must do. So let it be so, replied the Lord, who is strong in battle, and he called from, for some water to be brought from the ocean. He said, friend, even though you have no desire of your own, but having the vision of me is not without fruit. Consciousness applied the blessing of a king and marked his forehead appropriately. Instantly, a rain of flowers fell from the heavens. Thus, did consciousness save discrimination from the fire of ego's anger, fanned by the winds of his words, he also bestowed the entire kingdom. So, Ram anointed Bibishan the, the king of the, the kingdom of ego, uh, ego, the king of Lanka. Whatever wealth was given by Shiva to the one with ten heads when he offered him his ten heads in worship, that same wealth the Lord of light gave to discrimination without any hesitation. So Ram said to Bibishan, Hey, 
I'm not going there to conquer your kingdom. I just want my wife back. After I slay your evil brother, your kingdom is going to need a king. So I want you to be the king. You are discriminating, you are ethical, you are pure, you have this, your devotion to the feet of the Lord. Who would make a better king? So I am appointing you and anointing you the next king of the kingdom of the evil. After I slay Robin, you will be king. Forsaking such a benevolent, merciful Lord, men who worship other values are like an animal with neither horns nor tail. <laughs> uh, well, that's a pretty lowly animal. If you don't have a horn, if you don't have the horns and you don't have a tail, you're a pretty lowly animal. Recognizing discrimination as his servant, the Lord accepted his own. The family of monkeys highly respected this divine nature. Then the one who knows all, the one who resides in the hearts of all, he who is the form of all, the servant of circumstances, who wears a human form in order to give grace to devotees and to destroy the family of demons in order to protect ethical, ethical behavior, said these words. O oh, heroes, lords of, uh, lord of the monkeys, lord of the kingdom of the ego, listen. How can we cross this immense ocean? It is full of alligators, snakes, fish, and it is very deep and in every way difficult. And discrimination replied, O leader of light, even though your one arrow can dry up this and millions of other oceans, nonetheless, ethical behavior suggests that you should ask away from the ocean before you employ such a device. So before you resort to force and violence, uh, let's negotiate. Let's see if we can't find a way to, 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 for the ocean to give us a passage across. Lord, the ocean is an elder relative of your family. And that's true. You, Sada was a great king of Ayodhya. Uh, and he was performing the Ashwamedha Yagya in order to become uh, the emperor of the total known world. And while he was performing this Yagya, Indra came and stole the horse. And he stole the horse and he ran from the scene with the horse and he fled to the ashram of Kapil Muni. Kapil Muni was meditating Indra tied the horse to the gate of the ashram and left. Sagar's 60,000 sons ran in pursuit of the horse. They came to Kapil Muni's ashram and they said, Hey, Muni, wake up from your meditation. Why did you steal our father's horse? Kapil Muni said, he woke up from his meditation and he said, what horse? I don't know what you're talking about. And the kid said, hey, what do you mean? Now not only are you a thief, but you're a liar too. Here's the horse tied right to the gate of your ashram. Kapil Muni got mad. He said, I am neither a thief nor a liar. And you guys coming here disturbing the peace of my ashram, you go away from here before I curse you. The boy said, hey, not only are you a liar and a thief, but now you're a belligerent old man. And you're not worthy of being called the Rishi. And they said, you are deserving of punishment. We are going to throw stones at you. They threw a stone at him and they hit him in the head. And Kapil Muni took some Ganga water in his hand and he said, I pronounce the curse on you. And he turned the 60,000 sons of Sagar to ashes. Sagar was beset with, with anxiety and despair. 
he went and he fell at the feet of Kapil Muni and he prayed for his sons to be brought back to life. And Sagar said, look, those kids deserved what they got. They were belligerent, they called me names, they accused me of, uh, of, of, of stealing and lying and being a belligerent old man. And when one of your, when any member of your family brings Ganga to the earth, she will wash those ashes to the ocean and the, your sons will be returned to you. So Sagar began to play, pray to Ganga and he wasn't successful in making Ganga come to the earth. So he went and became the ocean. And then, uh, then came a whole lineage of kings that were born uh, in the lineage of descendants of Sagar and they all tried and they were unsuccessful until Bhagirat came and did a tremendous tapasya. And he decided, I'm not going to call Ganga to, ca to come. Ganga lives in the common dell of Brahma. I'm going to call Brahma. So then he prayed to Brahma, and Brahma said, yes, I can certainly make Ganga come to the earth, but she will come with such force that she'll wash away the earth. You have to call Shiva and ask him to accept Ganga on his head to break the force of her fall to earth so she doesn't wash away the earth and then she'll trickle down the locks of Shiva's hair and she'll become a river and that river will wash the ashes into the ocean. Bhagirath prayed to Shiva and Shiva gave him the boon and Ganga came to the earth like water from the Kamandal of uh, 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 Brahma washing the feet of Vishnu falling onto the hair of Shiva and coming down and washing the earth and purifying all the sins of humanity. So Sagar was the ocean and he was a descent he was a, a predecessor in the lineage of Ra. So he, he, uh, uh, discrimination says as Sagar, he's one of your old he's Purbaj, he's uh, he, he's one of your old relatives. And he will think over the matter and suggest a way. And then the entire army of bears and monkeys will be able to cross the ocean without tremendous exertion. So this is how far we got tonight. Uh, Ram is about to pray to the ocean to get to find the way to cross. And there he is sitting on the shore with brother determination and the excellent friend uh, Sugriv, the king of the monkeys, and the king of the the future king of the kingdom of the ego, uh, discrimination and pure devotion, all are sitting there and praying to the ocean to give them the indication how to cross. Do we have any questions tonight? Samji? Yes, please. On page 117, you uh, speak of the threefold torments of existence. Yes. So the torments of the body and the mind, one can understand, but what is the torment of the soul? When our soul is tortured, uh, it's perceiving only evil and selfishness. Uh, so the soul becomes tortured by looking at the, uh, uh, by witnessing only du duality, by not having any refuge or rest that it can take in unity. So that's the torture of the soul. When, when our soul is burdened, and we want to unburden our soul, then we try to relieve ourselves of all the guilty feelings that we store inside for the foolish behaviors we've committed. Self-conceit and self-deprecation are torturing our soul. And finally, we are able to put them into harmony and balance 
and then we only have self. So that's the torture to the, of the soul, the threefold type of, of anguish that we feel. Yes, please. Nanda from San Jose asking, Swamiji, Mandalini's fear brings up a question of tears. How does a father handle and overcome this of her fears? Efficiently. <laughs> Just as sadhaks are efficient. So the way they approach their fear is from an, an efficient analysis. Rather than looking only at the problem, that creates fear. The sadhu looks at the solution and finds uh, the appropriate uh, solution and thereby faces the fear with knowledge. We only fear when we don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. And with that, I'm afraid. But once I know what's going to happen, the fear goes away to the extent that I know. So when I cultivate knowledge, I exterminate fear. I eradicate fear by cultivating knowledge. And that's the process of a sign. Thank you. I have a question. How does a sign how does she support the mind? By, by asking the right questions. The Shakti, the feminine aspect, leads from behind. She says, O oh Lord of the kingdom of the ego, you are the guru. When I am a disciple, please tell me how this behavior is going to be beneficial to our kingdom. Her questions lead like any prosecuting attorney. She she is supporting the mind by asking the right questions. And she, in her, the, the softest thing in the world always overcomes the hardest. So the drip, drip, drip of the water cuts through the hardest stone. And the, the breeze of the wind moves away the Himalayas. Now, the woman of Mangaldari is Shakti. She is leading her husband and saying, this is not ethical behavior. I, I, how is this going to help us? How is this going to enhance our relationship with our, our, between the two of us, between husband and wife, between uh, our, our, uh, the, uh, the royal family and the community or the, the inhabitants of our kingdom, between our kingdom and the whole world? How is history going to regard us? Is this behavior appropriate for us? She supports the mind and she leads from behind. Namaste. To me, a call called the Jaye. Ashirvadi. This is the nature of life. This is the nature of life. Every story doesn't have the happy ending, but it has the privilege to celebrate God through our lives. It's not about achieving the happy ending and we'll all live happily ever after. It's about achieving the highest realization that God is acting through me and I've made a better a contribution to this world because of my having been here. I've made this world a better place just as Ram made it a better place, just as Krishna made a better place. It, it's not about achieving everlasting uh, happiness. 
not in this body. The everlasting happiness is the eternal love of God and pure devotion gives us the happiness. Matra. Eto. Orkomotaina. I don't know of any other alternative. Become one with pure devotion and become the witness. And we won't experience it as an unhappy ending. We will just see that it's a marine clean nature is changing according to her nature because that's her nature. There are various interpretations and various uh, um, applications of the snake. So there's the ashtanag, which are the, the snakes of energy which bind. And then there's amantana, uh, which is the snake of infinity. There's sheshnag, which is the snake. Uh, it, the, these are incarnations of Vishnu. And there's the snake which stands for the kundalini shakti. So uh, there are various applications of the snake. It is not consistent. There's not only one snake. In fact, I am one of the more slimy characters you will meet. There's not only one snake. There are uh, several applications of the snake. No, in this case, Bhivishan was kicked out of the, e uh, the kingdom of the ego. He was ordered to leave by the king. He went to his mother, Kaikeshi, and he said, Mother, Ravana has told me to get out of the kingdom. He'll be lost without discrimination. What shall I do? And mother said, uh, you should go join consciousness and make sure he is fight is only with Ravana and not with all the citizens of Lanka. So, uh, uh, that's my in, um, instruction to you. That's your minister's instruction. That's the best that you can do for the people of your kingdom, is join hands with consciousness and guide the course of the war so that Ram knows that the citizens of Lanka are not uh, to blame. And his only... Uh, enmity is with Ravan, with the ego itself. So in this situation, the discrimination is doing the right thing. He's been instructed by his gurus, he's been blessed by his mother, and he knows in his heart he is working for the upliftment of his community. In every circumstance, we will understand when it is time to go and when it's time to stay. That is the function of discrimination. Om Sam Sarasvati Namaha. Namaste. And do we have any other questions tonight? Sure, let's talk about them. I'm afraid it might be off the record because it appears that we've run out of tape, but uh, we can talk about them anyway. Gauri is asking, sometimes I still sit in asana, but mind is still wonky, jumping around from limb to limb. Should I chant louder, faster, what? Both are helpful. Louder, faster. If he, that monkey's making a lot of noise, then you've got to chat louder than that monkey. Uh, and that's why you often hear me screaming uh, at a very loud tone. The, there are many things that you can do to bring that monkey mind back to a state of rest, Lori. Uh, 
while you're chanting, try to focus on the meaning. And if you can't understand what it is that you're saying, then focus on the mool mantra of the text that you're reciting. If it be the Chandi, it will be the Navarna mantra. If it be the Sundrakhand, it will be J Ram, J Ram, Sri Ram, J Ram, J J Ram. If, you, if it's uh, the Bhagavad Gita, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. Get into the Bhav of the mool mantra if you cannot understand the text. And get into the Bhav of what chapter you're reading. If it's the Chandi, Oh, I'm cutting down self-conceit and self-deprecation. Oh, I'm facing the seed of desire. Here goes all my desires. And watch and visualize as the sadhana progresses and get into the bob of what it is you're offering. So there are many tools. You can use avayab yoga, uh, where you concentrate on one part of the deity that you're praying to. Or you look at the entire cosmic altar, and you see it all, and then you focus in slowly, slowly on one deity. And then on the, from the one deity, you go to the one aspect. Maybe you only look at the smiling face of that one deity. And you bring your mind, your your a cloister for your thoughts, smaller and smaller and smaller until it enters into the center, and that's where you meditate. There are many, many techniques, Gauri, that we will use. Make sure your pranayama is regular. Make sure you are inhaling a verse as you exhale a verse. Or exhale two verses. Make sure you pronounce, even you move your lips. As you inhale, make sure that you inhale every syllable of the mantra that you are inhaling. And as you exhale, pronounce the mantras that you are reciting. These are all techniques to bring our minds to a greater and greater and ever greater still degree of focus. Absolutely, it's, it's certainly possible and it's done regularly. We, every gift, every dhan that we, uh, we make offering of is performed with sankalpa. And then the, it is offered with mantra. And then it is received with mantra. And then it is blessed with mantra. And it's a puja in itself. The, the offering of dhan is the offering, a loving offering is a, the fulfillment of a sankalpa. And it's not saying that if I win the lottery, I will make a donation to the temple. It's not a contingent offering. It is, hey God, I really want you to have this. And I'm giving to you from my heart because I want you to have it. I want to demonstrate something of the, the sincerity, I, some little portion of the sincerity of the love that I have in my heart for you by making this offering in your honor. And now you will determine what my prasad will be. If I bring you a, a, a box of ladus, will you give me one ladu? If I give you a box of fruit, will you give me one apple? If I, I I'm a commission wallet. <laughs> Can I have a little commission? If I give you my full devotion, if I give you, uh, the, I support your temple, I, I support your sadhus, I support your the exposition of your knowledge. Will you give me? What will you give me? That's up to you. It's up to you. I'm not giving it in exchange for. Uh, believe me, Papia, I have heard so many times, oh, if I win the lottery, I'm going to give 10% to the temple. <laughs> Bakwash. Uh, this is not Don. This is a goosh. This is bribery. Uh, 
So we're, we're trying to make an offering of the sincerity of the love of our hearts. That's the main ingredient. After which we can choose any medium to convey that offering, that sincerity. Om Sang Sarasvati Namaste. Thank you everybody for joining us.